Copenhagen, yeah! I don't know why I need to do that. But anyway, Sony's latest releases, A6600, that's the sexy loud one. Woof. But this is the quiet one that you should be paying attention to. And here's why. The best things in life are the reasonably priced non-shit options. Tick for the form of the A6100 and seemingly avoid a deterred action too. But how does it all fit in in the range? With all these model names is getting kind of confusing. They've got the A6100 which is this, A6400, A6500 which I think is still going to be sold, A6600 which replaced the A6500, there's the A6400 which comes below that and then this A6100 is a replacement of the old, old, old A6000 which I didn't think they were going to replace, but they have. And there it is. And to make things no less complicated, you can still get the old A6000 along with the old A6400, which makes trying to figure out which one to buy a bit of a pain in the bum holio. A6100, these kind of lower end cameras get the least amount of love in these kind of events. It's the A6600, the higher end cameras that get all of the attention. They might have all the fancy specs, but these, they're the bread and butter of the camera world. Forget your fancy Danish pastry and sink your metaphorical teeth into one of these suckers right here. Maybe add a bit of Nutella on top of that too, because on paper, there's nothing plain about the specs of the A6100. Let me reel off some specs first. 24 megapixels, 11 FPS, and it's got an auto focusing system with 425 phase detection points and real tracking AF. Sound familiar? More than likely, because that is what its more expensive siblings have. It has a lot of the goodness of the high-end stuff for less money. This is like the stereotypical Copenhagen shot. This is this is the Wikipedia shot right here. If you don't like bicycles, you're not going to like it here. There's a fuckload of bicycles. It's, it's like Tour de France, but Tour de, Tour de fucking hell, there's a lot of bicycles here. Cyclists, fine. Jiggling like a clad ass is fine for the wearer, not for the person behind, though. The view's fine here, though. Wow, they're really serious about their cycling here. Looks like he wants to break a sound barrier with a cycle. Essentially, the A6100 is an A6400, same ISO range of 100 to 32,000, 14 bit raw, same sensor, processor, essentially, you're getting almost the same camera. For taking photos, it's quite hard to knock it. It, it does everything really well for not a lot of money. The A6000 is claimed to be the best selling mirrorless camera of all time. That's probably because it's got long shelf life. I mean, from 2014 when it's first released, up until now, you can still buy it now new. It's got like the longevity of a Twinkie for crying out loud. It's low hanging fruit. It's easily attainable by most people. It's like the anti canon higher end features, the real time tracking, face human or animal IF, made easily attainable for all. Now this supposedly has the same 24 megapixel sensors as the A6600, same 0.02 second AF system too. One of those shots was out of focus, but otherwise the A6100 doesn't hate cyclists apparently, which is good because we're in Copenhagen. Autofocus performs well and without hesitation, but you can't expect a cheaper camera to be perfect in all areas. Of course, with entry level cameras, they've got to dumb it down in some kind of way. It's just a matter of what that doesn't make the consumer feel like a bit of an idiot. Of course, they've had to save on something such as the EVF, which has less pixels, and you can kind of see it when you put it to your eye. It's not quite as fine, not quite as crisp. 1.4 million dot EVF versus 2.3 million dot EVF for the 64 and 6600. Typically, economical cameras have economical build quality and economical case designs. In terms of case design, this isn't too bad because it looks like all of the other increasingly confusingly named A6000 cameras. It's got the same basic shape and maybe different uses of materials. I mean, it doesn't have the magnesium alloy body of the A6600. And it's got the old battery that you see in the A6400 and A6500. 
The second biggest shame is that the cheapest in the range means it has the cheapest feeling body, thus not as tough and doesn't have the ceiling of the more expensive ones. The biggest shame is that although it has the same 4K video specs with 1080 120p, 4K video and just like that A6400, A6600, still 100 Mbps, the only thing is it doesn't have S-Log2, S-Log3, no S-Log, no hybrid log gamma, in fact no picture profiles, so you just have to shoot in the same setting as you do with stills. Of course you don't have IBIS but the A6400 doesn't, but on the flip side, not everyone knows how to deal with log files, nor even hybrid log gamma. But overall, it's a great all-rounder, although for video not for those who need to grade them. It's got a solid set of features despite being the most affordable of these confusingly named set of cameras. And that's the thing, which one do you get then? Although available, I'd forget about the 6000 and 6500, and perhaps the A6400 too. It's the middle option, a bit more with a bit more features, but mainly serves to make you wish you'd gone all the way and bought the top end one, which is what you should get if you're looking for more features. Otherwise, the A6100 can serve you well for not very much at all. I guess they're not doing too well with the film sales, are they? And they said film's not dead.